In this guide, I'll show you step by step how to configure RetroArch to play Amiga games using the PUAE Core. So before we begin, please ensure that you have done the following. Install RetroArch. Have at least one Amiga game ADF file ready. Obtain some Amiga Kickstart ROM files. This is optional as PUAE has a built-in Kickstart ROM, but to ensure maximum compatibility, I recommend using actual Kickstart ROM files. These can be legally purchased as part of the Amiga Forever by Cloanto package. A useful tip is to purchase the Amiga Forever Essentials Android app. This app also contains the Amiga Kickstart files you'll need and is very cheap to buy. And finally, ensure your controller is connected to your system. I prefer playing Amiga games with a joystick rather than a gamepad. The Competition Pro USB, in my view, is the best modern USB-based joystick for playing Amiga games via emulation. I'll leave links in the description for you to check out. So the first step is to download the PUAE 2021 core in RetroArch. So first boot up RetroArch and select Load Core and then Download a Core. Then scroll down the core downloader list until you reach Commodore Amiga PUAE 2021. If your version of RetroArch is not showing the 2021 core, then just download the regular PUAE core. Select this and the core will begin to download and install. If you're using an existing installation of RetroArch, it's also advisable to return to the main menu, navigate downwards to Online Updater, and then select Update Core Info Files and Update Databases. Running these updates ensures everything is up to date and minimizes the likelihood of any issues. If you're going to use Amiga Kickstart ROM files instead of the built-in Kickstart, these will need to be copied to the RetroArch system folder. You'll only need to copy those that you plan to use, but if you are able to obtain all of the Kickstart files, feel free to copy them all across. The system folder can be found in your RetroArch installation directory. Now I typically use the A1200 Kickstart for most games, but there may be compatibility issues with older games, so it's often better to stick with the A500 Kickstart. But for flexibility in playing older games and later AGA games, I recommend copying at least the A500 and A1200 Kickstarts to the RetroArch system folder. Be sure to also copy across the rom.key file. This is normally included as part of the Amiga Kickstart ROM bundle. It is worth noting that PUAE in RetroArch requires BIOS files to be named correctly. The list on screen now is taken from the PUAE LibRetro site and provides details as to what the file names should be for the Amiga Kickstart files. As mentioned before, PUAE possesses a moderately compatible built-in Kickstart, functioning as a fallback when the appropriate Kickstart remains undiscovered. Both Amiga Forever and Tosec file names are recognized and accepted by PUAE as shown here. So as long as your file names are all correctly as per this table, you should have no problems. Now moving on to playing games. An ADF file is an Amiga disk file. These are basically single file dumps of actual Amiga disks. And these are essentially what you would have just put into the disk drive of your old Amiga. With PUAE, we're using ADF files as replacements for these original floppy disks. And these have to be treated as such. So to play a single disc game, such as Stunt Car Racer, simply select Load Content from the main menu in RetroArch and navigate to where your game ADF file is stored and select it. It will then boot your game. But because Amiga games often came on more than one single disc, it is necessary to have to swap discs during the game. This is possible in RetroArch in a couple of ways. The first is using the Disc Control feature in RetroArch to swap discs. To do this, press F1 to access the Quick menu and select the following options. Disk Control, Eject Disk, Load New Disk, select the disk you need to use, Insert Disk, and then press F1 to return to your game. PUAE will now add this disk to the disk index and use the disk you have selected. If you need to reinsert a previous disk, simply go back to the Disk Control menu, select Current Disk Index, and select the appropriate disk from the list. Now to play multiple disk games using .m3u files, you need to do a little bit of configuration. If you prefer to keep things a little tidier in RetroArch, it is possible to create .m3u playlists for each game. These are essentially a text file that RetroArch can refer to to understand how many disks are associated with a game. You will find that when booting games via a .m3u file is that some will automatically swap disks in game and some will not. But booting games via a .m3u file means that RetroArch Disk Control will at least know how many disks exist for each game, making it easier to change disks when prompted. To create a .m3u file, simply create a text file and enter the location of the Amiga disk file, one per line. Make sure to enter them in the correct chronological order, starting with disk 1. 
Once you've done this, be sure to save the file with a .m3u file extension. You can do this by naming your file and changing the save as type to all files, making sure your file has a .m3u extension at the end. Once you've done this, you'll be able to boot your game via the .m3u file you've created. As mentioned earlier, some games will automatically swap the disks for you. These are typically games that on a real Amiga are able to utilize multiple disk drives, but some games don't. If you find the game does not automatically swap disks, press F1 and select these options from the RetroArch menu. Disk Control, Eject Disk, Current Disk Index, then select the disk you need to use, Insert Disk, and then press F1 to return to your game. PUAE will then load the data required from the disk you've selected. The PUAE core boasts a fine array of options allowing you to fine tune your emulator for an optimal experience. To access these options, press the F1 key or your designated hotkey to pause the emulation and enter the RetroArch Quick menu. Scroll down the menu and select Core Options. Here you'll gain access to an extensive range of PUAE Core Emulator options, encompassing video, audio and emulator performance. One feature I find particularly useful is the ability to remove the common black borders that appear with emulating the Amiga. The PUAE Core allows you to reduce these to maximise the amount of screen used for games, and reducing those often ugly large borders. To do this, access the Quick menu by pressing F1 and select Core Options then Video, then go down to Crop. You can now select how aggressively the borders are removed. It's often best to just select Automatic, but you can manually adjust these settings as required. So as you can see, Amiga emulation with RetroArch is actually quite a fiddly business, but I hope this video has helped you out. For more RetroArch and emulation guides, explore the channel as well as taking a look at howtoretro.com. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.